Hey there, everyone. Thanks for tuning into Sin's Workshop. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. So, today we're going to be talking about Love in the Age of Dragons by Fatima Henson. This is a young adult sci fi fantasy, and if you guys know me, you know I really do like when science fiction is blended together with fantasy. In this novel, dragons have invaded our galaxy via a wormhole. Now, what I liked about this is the fact that the dragons are not the dragons that I'm traditionally familiar with. These are more animalistic, more primal dragons, so to speak. I mean, they really have no interaction with humans. I don't know if there's going to be a sequel. I don't know if this is something that's going to be fleshed out. Um, you know, but these are... Not, I guess you could think of them as the dragons from like Skyrim in a way, but there's no way to communicate with them. They are purely animalistic. They're purely hunters, um, like a pack of wolves, really. So there's really no way for the humans to communicate with them. And I think it's interesting, you know, the premise, the story takes place in Georgia, of all places, in the near future. Um, and... I think it's really cool that the dragons came from another galaxy, you know, via a wormhole opened by our main character, Ayana's father. And so the story follows Ayana, you know, years after the, dra after the dragon infestation, and she's living in an underground community in the abandoned subway tunnels with a bunch of other people. Now, I wanted to like this book more than I actually did, unfortunately. Um, one of my biggest hiccups with this book is just the overall romantic storytelling. You guys know me. I'm not really one for romance, but ironically, I actually wanted more romance <laughs> in this story. Uh, I mean, the book is called Love in the Age of Dragons. And it's supposed to maybe revolve around a love triangle between Ayana, this guy she meets, Jackson, and then her former best friend, Richard. Now, right from the beginning, it sets up this strong tension between her and Richard. And you're thinking, oh, are they exes? No, they're not even exes. They're Xbox friends. But they're not ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend, but you can feel the tension between these two characters. And you know what? I liked that tension. I kind of wish it had been explored way more than it actually was because the author's main focus was building this insta-love rela um, relationship between Jackson and Ayana, and it just didn't work out, you know? Their first interaction is very, very brief. Then he goes on his own way. Second interaction, again, very brief. He goes on his ho his own way. Halfway through the book, this is when he finally says, Hey, I'm going to come knock on your door and join your community for a little bit. And even then, it takes some time. For them to actually start dating. And then all of a sudden they're dating. Except you're not really seeing them together. And then all of a sudden it's just like he's leaving. And she's like you can't leave. I'm in love with you. And it just wasn't believable. It was very underdeveloped. And it was very very rushed. And I wished I could have lost myself in it. You know, ironically, I know, me saying I want romance. Crazy, right? I wanted more of that between her and Richard because I felt like the tension was way more developed between her and Richard. I wanted the focus to be on him, not this other guy, Jackson. I feel like he was just a distraction. He was just a red herring and he was a distraction, not just for her, but for the plot. And then you have... The characterization. You know, I wanted more characterization as well. I think Ayana 
she really could have been a strong female character. And right from the beginning, you know, the whole reason she meets Jackson in the first place is because she left the compound when she wasn't supposed to, to go get this herb um, to help with the doctor's heart, you know, the community doctor's heart. He has congestive heart failure. And she is training. She is his apprentice. She is training to be his replacement, but she doesn't feel confident enough. She doesn't feel strong enough. She doesn't feel like she is well equipped to take it. So everything she's doing while at to, you know, prolong his life while admirable just continues to showcase all of her insecurities. She has a voice. It's clear she has a voice. You see it in her internal narrative, especially when she keeps trying to get the community's council to be like, hey, we have to destroy this dam. We need water. You know, this dam is created by the dragons. It's, you know, interfering with our water supply. We need to destroy it. But she doesn't voice her concerns loud enough. She lets them shut shut them down because, again, she doesn't believe in herself. And part of why she doesn't believe in herself is because of her father's actions of opening up the wormhole. I really don't see how A plus B equals C in this respect. He was a genius. He was doing all this research. Yes, he took the blame for it because, yes, it was his fault, but I don't know how that has to do with her not feeling good enough to study medicine. Maybe she's afraid she's going to make mistakes like her father. Unfortunately, even when the doctor does die, she does not rise to that occasion. Not really. Like, she rises to it to some degree, but you still see all of her insecurities come to life. She still doesn't believe in herself, but it's other characters who are just like saying, you can do this, you can do this. That she does the thing she needs to do to help the people in the community. However, she still doesn't believe herself. She's like constantly shaking her head like, no, 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 I can't do this. You guys need a better doctor. Blah, blah, blah. Um, In the beginning, her insecurities did make her relatable. But after a point, they became really, really tiresome for the plot. I wanted more story out of that. I wanted more depth, you know. There's only just so much self-degradation that I can take from characters. and Because I need character growth. And there was really no character growth for Ayana. It's probably why I couldn't really connect to her relationship with Jackson. Whereas with Richard, there was a nice push and pull between those two. That I felt like there really could have been... A lot more characterization, a lot more character depth, and a lot more character growth as far as Ayana is concerned. So, it's funny. When I first gave this book its starred review, like my initial first reaction, I'm like, you know, it's not that bad. It's okay. It's decent. And I gave it four stars. Since then, as I've just been working on my reviews and thinking about it. I'm just like, this is not a four star book, clearly. This is more like a two and a half um, star, two and a half out of five star book, unfortunately. I would like to see a sequel. Um, there are some things about the book, you know, Jackson's parentage that was super obvious and predictable. Um, but, you know, if you're going to hint at a love triangle, give me a love triangle. I was not given a love triangle. I don't mind love triangles in the story. I really don't. Um, I wanted more romance, ironically. If you're going to tell me this is supposed to be a love triangle romance set in a world, you know, deliver on what your premise is. I don't think that Henson did deliver on the premise, unfortunately. So, yeah, two and a half out of five stars. Um, But you know what? My opinion is my own, and you may end up liking the book more than you think. So, or at least more than I did. So, if you want to go ahead and purchase the book, I will include links in the description of where to purchase the books. 
Um, the bookshop link and Amazon are both affiliate links and clicking on those will help me and this podcast out a whole bunch. You can also become a supporter on Buy Me a Coffee or Anchor FM for one ninety nine a month uh, or just 99 cents a month. Um, and Anchor FM is my recording platform. And on that note... I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Please don't forget to like this podcast, subscribe to it, and share it with all your book-loving friends. Have a wonderful day and happy reading.